besties welcome back to the channel and our first wrap up of the year so here are the 11 books i read in january so to start off the month i read the hookup plan by farah roshan and um this is actually a interconnected standalone so this is the third book in that series the other two are literally right here on the cover as you can see but you can totally read this on your own if you want to, out of order, whatever you want. Really all this one spoils is how the friends met um, because the Interconnected Standalone is about her besties. Each bestie has its own book and the first book shows how they met. That's pretty much the main thing you're gonna get spoiled and there is some tea at the end of the book for one of the couples. The hookup plan is basically a nemesis with benefits trope, kind of. So London and Drew are former high school rivals. And they meet again during their high school reunion and they decide to have a hookup plan. As London is assuming we'll never have to see Drew again because he does not live in Austin like she does. But lo and behold, the next day at her hospital, who shows up? This mother effer. <laughs> so Drew is actually in charge of figuring out if her hospital that she works at, because she is a pediatric surgeon, this queen, Drew has to decide whether they need to sell her hospital that she works at or not. They decide to continue on with their hookup plan for the time being to help relieve some stress. <laughs> So I gave this book four out of five stars. I really loved the banter of it. The banter reminded me of the love hypothesis. The stories aren't that similar, but since they were like highly educated and just all the excellence and the banter was great, it did remind me of the love hypothesis and I love the love hypothesis, just even though it's cheesy and whatever, I just loved it. I had a good time reading it. So it did remind me of that just from the banter, um, but I gave it four stars mainly because it's more women's fiction with a subplot of romance, which is fine. There's a lot of great character development within this book, but my main thing was I never felt like Drew and London were like soulmates or anything like that. Like. I honestly wouldn't have cared if they ended up dating other people in the end. <laughs> so that's a bummer. But I did love Drew as a book boyfriend. I loved London. It was just a fun time. So I would still highly recommend it. And then after that, I read Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This is a very popular book, as we all know. Um, it was actually on Kindle Unlimited, which I didn't know, so that's why I read it on. But this is a magical realism book that basically centers on a coffee shop in Japan. And it's a magical coffee shop to where you can go and visit the past, but you have to come back before your coffee gets cold. So there's about three or four different stories within the book. And I'm not gonna lie, the first story I was kind of like, I wonder why is this popular? Why is this book popular? But then the second story hit and I literally was crying. That book is actually in my how many books I can read in 24 hours video. So you can actually see me cry if you want to. Um, <laughs> but it was actually a very good book. It was the first five stars of the year. I think the only five stars, actually no, that's a lie. We got another one, but it was the first five stars of the year, which is great. Love that. And I would highly recommend it. Um, there's more to the series, but honestly, I have such a, it has such a nice place in my heart that I don't even know if I want to continue with the series. <laughs> like, I feel like I'll get let down for some reason if I read the other series, other books in the series. So I don't know if I'll continue with the series or not, but highly recommend five out of five stars. Then after that, I read American Royalty. This is basically Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, if Meghan Markle was a rapper. It was a fun little read. Um, I did give it four stars also, just because there's, I just didn't really connect with the characters that much. They didn't really meet until like 100 pages later, which I never really like. And then since she's a rapper, some of her lyrics are written in the book. And I hate any song lyrics, any rapping, any any song related things being written and put in a book i don't like it because it's just cringy because I, I can't hear it so it's just words on a page i guess that's the whole, a book in general but 
I didn't really like that that much. There's a second book for the series coming out. Um, I didn't really care about the couple themselves enough to read it, but the cover is really pretty. So maybe I'll read it just because of the cover. <laughs> so I don't know. Then after that, I read Crying in H Mart, which is a memoir of Michelle going through the process of grief when her mother dies of cancer and she is connecting the best way she can through food and Korean food since she is half Korean and her mother was Korean and that is the best way she can connect with her mother after she has passed. It was a very good memoir, I have to say. I usually don't like rating memoirs or like auto autobiographies and stuff because it's like someone's life and so that just feels weird to me but I realized I could rate like the writing style at least um, because I'm sure the book itself needs ratings to like survive <laughs> but I would give it four stars I think I just kind of wanted a little bit more because I think memoirs can connect to like a broader like elements and parts of life and I just feel like it was so heavily focused on her and the grief of her mother and nothing else which is totally fine i still enjoyed reading it i just would give it four stars instead of five because of that then i read arrogant boss by olivia haley this is basically following a millionaire um owner of a tech company who meets this girl at a club or whatever and he starts to like her or whatever but she thinks he's pretty arrogant and doesn't really want anything to do with him and then the next day she meets him at a very important meeting and realizes that uh, she's gonna have to deal with him very often <laughs> very like office romance e, which i was very intrigued by because that was my jam on wattpad days office romances were my thing i loved those with my whole heart <laughs> and so i would give this book three stars um i liked the story but i feel like it was very it was very wattpad like <laughs> which is fine but it was just kind of um not very well written in my opinion i feel like for it to be titled arrogant boss the boss wasn't that arrogant <laughs> like there was definitely moments of him being um self-centered or there was arrogant moments but i wouldn't say he's an arrogant boss overall so then after that i finally read Akatar, at least the first three and the novella um i just don't have the novella physically but i have reading vlogs for each book here i'll leave them down below if you want to check those out so i won't talk about these too much but basically the first book Akatar, is a uh, beauty and beast retelling and then the other two the rest of the series kind of just ditches that whole plot um so i gave it three stars i think this one is a good book to start if you're trying to get into fantasy and you've never been for me it was pretty lackluster and just kind of just like meh to me but then the second book akamoth a court of mist and fury this one was so good i gave it five stars it was amazing i loved every minute of this book which is surprising because it is thick okay so five stars for that one and then i gave the third one four and a half stars um i did have some critiques to it i feel like there um could have been some better um writing towards some of the characters i feel like some characters she wrote about like lucian you guys know i'm biased and love lucian so much i think she could have done a lot better with writing his character or just killing him off like from the get-go <laughs> so yeah i gave this one 4.5 stars rj mass definitely has changed my opinion on book links because i was the type of person that really felt like if you cannot wrap up your story in a trilogy and like it be not as thick as this you probably don't know how to write <laughs> but honestly at least with fantasy i think she's proven me wrong because well this one was not that great but these two amazing i loved it and they are so thick but she still like kept me intrigued kept me on the edge of my seat and i just loved it i got the audiobook for the novella on libby called a court of frost and starlight um i just listened to it in like two and a half hours or so and i gave it three stars i didn't think it was really that necessary to have um it was kind of just 
job. I don't know. <laughs> there was really nothing about the novella that was like that interesting, but I think I liked the ending and I liked Nesta's chapter. So yeah, I'm excited to start Silver Flames in like a month or two so I can just get back into that world. It's It was a great time. I loved, I, I really do love that series. And then I read Babel. So I've actually been reading Babel this whole month, basically. Um, and I was also just reading all these other books in between. But Babel by Arif Kwan, this is kind of a historical fiction with elements of fantasy in it. And so this is basically following the translators of Oxford during colonization periods and kind of just all that heavy stuff, you know? I really did enjoy this book. Book. Um, it's very long. <laughs> I ended up giving it four stars because there was some slow moments to it that I think could have been cut out. I don't think it needed to be as long as it was but I definitely felt like a smarty pants when I was reading this book because this also since it's called Babel it's also talking uh, heavily about languages things of that sort and so I just felt like a little nerd telling my friends like did you know that this word in Latin in <laughs> so that was fun for me I am I am a nerd a little bit oh my gosh the ending the ending bro <laughs> it was so good but yeah I would give it four stars and I highly recommend and then to end the month I listened to another audiobook on Libby for one Italian summer this is a fiction book and it's following um I forgot her name Katie I literally listened to it yesterday, <laughs> but I think her, no, was her name Katie? I don't know, but we're following a girl, <laughs> following a woman who's dealing with the grief of losing her mother, and her and her mother were planning on going to Italy for a summer trip, which her mother had gone to before she had her kid, and so she wants to like show her daughter like this amazing place that she loved grew to love and stuff but she dies before they can make that trip and so she decides to go on that trip by herself and see what it is about the city that her mom loved so much um until she gets there and she sees the 30 year old version of her mother she's like what? <laughs> and so yeah that's the book it's pretty short um i listened to this one in like two and a half hours so didn't take very much time in my day but I gave it two stars <laughs> and I gave it two stars because <laughs> this main character wants to marry her mom and you can't tell me she doesn't okay <laughs> it was just so like oh my gosh the writing of her grief was so just like weird like it was mommy issues it's like when you make fun of men for being mama's boys like she was a she was a mama's girl like to the core like she literally would not make a decision without her mother even though she was married like she is the epitome of a mama's girl and so i didn't like that um there's literally a quote about like but what do you do um when the love of your life is your mom and like what do you do with your husband now like girl <laughs> get a grip <laughs> honestly the last couple chapters like she gets like an epiphany and learns all these things like the fact that her mom had a life before her <gasps> oh my gosh um yeah <laughs> but there's like a massive character development within the last couple of chapters that made me start liking the book um because before when i was listening to it i was like i'm gonna give this one star like i haven't given a one star in so long but i'm gonna give you a one star and then the character development was happening and i was like okay maybe two stars so um if you don't want spoilers for this part of the book i'll give you a timestamp somewhere to skip this part because i just gotta talk about it um but if you don't care or you've read it before cool so with the cheating trope um most people are probably not going to agree with me but at least in books not in real life but <laughs> in books if the cheating trope is like they just kissed someone i can usually get over that really quickly like i don't really care as much if it's a kiss or something that's why i didn't care when like 
all your, all your perfects cheated because it was a kiss and I was like whatever I don't care <laughs> so like I don't care if it's just a kiss um I care when it's like you're they literally slept together it's an or it's like an emotional affair or something a lot more heavy it needs to be heavier for me for that and so in the book she like hangs out with this guy and then she ends up kissing him and but then she stops herself and I was like okay okay so with this character development like as long as she keeps it there like maybe I'll give it three stars but then homegirl sleeps with him after she finds out that her mom had an actual life before her and is just so sad and like dumbfound over it that she decides to sleep with this man and so yeah I couldn't go back from that I was like two stars for you ma'am um <laughs> and it didn't even make sense because after they sleep together like literally the chat like a chapter or two later is when she's like oh I see that I'm in the past and blah 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 and then she has her like character development or whatever and decides to work it out with her husband you know but honestly I'm just like so did she sleep with him or did he she not is she gonna tell her husband does it even count because it was like was it like an optical illusion like you know so i still don't know i read this whole book and i still don't know how in the hell she saw her mother <laughs> i still don't know so yeah two stars from me thank you but sadly, that is how we're ending the, the month of Ju July. Hello? January. <laughs> that is how we're ending the month of January, sadly. Um, not on a high note, but it only took two hours of my life, so it's okay. We're fine with it. But yeah, those are the 11 books I read in January. Definitely let me know down below if you've read any of these books or what you guys read in January. And thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you follow me on my socials. I'm most active on my Instagram. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Meet me on the street lights. Meet me where the lights fade out. Tell me what it feels like